How y'all doing? Um, hope y'all had a good day today. Am I looking in the camera? Is it here? Is it here? Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I'm laughing and I'm upbeat, but I'm a little bit bothered. Um, I'm very bothered by this vision I had. I posted a comment on my channel. I don't know if you saw it, but it was a lot for me to go ahead and talk about this. So, if you could bear with me, this video may be a little bit long, about 10 minutes or so. But I want to make sure I explain this vision exactly the way God gave it to me. Um, we are in a very, very significant time as far as the timeline throughout the Word of God and what He told us would happen and all the events taking place. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and go right into the vision. In the vision, um, I was in the mall, and the escalator on the mall, um, in the mall, was almost the whole length of the mall. Now, I haven't been to any mall in the United States, or anywhere else for that matter, that's made that way. Uh, the escalator wasn't made out of uh, metal materials. It was made out of rubber, almost like a recycled rubber, a very tough rubber. Um, it almost looked industrialized, if that makes sense to you. Um, and what I gathered from that, metal, metal became a rare source, a rare resource. Metal was not, um, either it became a rare resource or it became very expensive and they started using something else. Um, but that's what things were made out of in this mall that are usually made out of metal. And the best I can explain it, it's almost like the 18 wheelers on a truck, that material, like that, but very strong, very industrialized. So I'm riding on this elevator, um, and as I get to the end of the elevator, which seemed like it took forever, because the, I mean, not the elevator, the escalator, it was so long, and I finally stepped off of it, um, and there were beams all through the mall and these beings were scanning me for any potential threat I don't know it was a um, bio threat as far as a virus or disease but these beings were scanning me and I was standing there and I was just like wow just at the top of the escalator I was just looking around I was just like wow like it it I was speechless um, just to see these beings everywhere scanning everybody for any potential threat. Um, we were treated like we were in a country that had a dictator and not a president. Um, there were no kids running around the mall as usual. It wasn't a place of fun. Um, and the few kids that I saw were very controlled, I guess you would put it. There was no laughter. Nobody was smiling. No one was happy. Everyone looked either upset or almost as if they didn't have any emotion at all. Um, my child was 10. She was with me and I found out. Um, so this leaves now. I leave the mall and I'm at a house. Um, and so now I'm at this house and I'm talking to this child, which I assume was my daughter. Okay. Um and because she was 10 years old my daughter's 10 so I'm just assuming it may not have been my daughter it could have been someone in the future um, that will be living in this time but I was sitting talking to this young lady and there's she has an outburst you know and um and I walked over and I'm like what's wrong with you and as I'm talking to her I noticed these sores these wounds on her that look like blisters now, um, are you all interested in me showing you what these blisters look like? I don't know why I think about things like this. I'm like, well, maybe I should show them what I saw. Uh, I'm going to show you the closest thing to what I saw. If you just give me a second here. While I'm pulling this up, pulling up these pictures, I'm going to finish describing to you um, what it looked like outside but these are what the blisters look like this is as close as I can get to the blisters 
Jordan Randall is your big hope for sending out China. Okay. We don't have time to waste here, Matt. Here. We took a chance for an unfolded message in this folder and it backfired. She just might have the world's best answer to China. What does she have to say? I know y'all like, why don't you just get a screen capture? Well, I didn't have the time to do that. Cut the lights out for me. Cut the overhead light out, clearly. Okay. Yeah, cut the overhead light out. I'll get a screen capture soon. No, the big light, baby. The big light. Okay. So, anyway, okay. This is what the blisters look like. I don't know if you can see this now. There we go. I don't know if you can see it. Um, okay, so enough of that. Oh, this is so gross, but that's exactly what it looked like. Okay, so anyway, now if you can imagine the blister, it had a little parasite, and the parasite was, I could see the parasite crawling inside the blister, and I was just so shocked and so stunned, it was just nothing like I've ever seen, and I pulled her pants leg up, and she had some on her legs also, so they were on her legs and her arms. And it was just these little bitty parasites, almost like maybe a nanobot or something. I don't know. It just, it didn't look natural. It, it almost looked manufactured or like organic, like it's blended with natural and manufactured. That's that's why I could describe this thing. Um, if I find some pictures of it, I will pull it up for you all. Okay, so as I'm talking to her, she says to me, I've been having sex. I'm like, you've been having sex? You're only 10 years old, you know? Where's your mother? And this when I figured out it wasn't my daughter. And uh, she just kind of shrugged her shoulders. And she says, you know, everybody else does it. And everybody at school is having sex or whatever. And I'm like, but you're 10. And she looked at me like, and, you know, what does that have? That's irrelevant. So that, that lets me know that things are changing. And it's going to get to a point where 10-year-old having sex is not a rare occurrence. Okay. I'm to the point where it's a norm, and um, they're going to start pushing birth control, condoms, and things like that on fifth graders. And I believe this to be the grade that they're going to start this um, sexual information, all of that. Okay, so I, I assume it's some type of STD that doesn't exist yet that's going to be going around, or this is um, because of biological warfare. Um, okay, so we're arguing back and forth talking about this, and I noticed she was very stoic. She was very robbed of emotion, no feeling, uh, there were no tears, there was no sadness in her face. And as I'm talking to her, she's getting violent. Even though there was no emotion, she began to get irate and violent, but still very emotionless. You know, if you could imagine me. Um, plunging at you, but there's no emotion in my face. Almost like my soul is just completely gone. And we ended up in a scramble, and I ended up having to grab her and push her against the um, wall and hold her down to keep her from hurting me. Um, so this went on for a few minutes, and she says to me, um, you know, it was with several boys in several different places. And she said, all the fifth graders are doing it. And, you know, <laughs> all while this is going on, keep in mind I have my consciousness. So I'm sitting here like, is this for real? Are you serious? That's what's going on now? And, um, you know, and the zombie, like the very stoic, no emotion. When I woke up, my interpretation I got from that was the the poisoning with the fluoride and everything else is being put in the food, in the air, uh, in the water. And it, it's doing something to our brains where it's making us dumb down, so to speak. Uh, it, 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 it makes it more difficult to connect with a higher conscience, to, to connect with a, a mind of Christ. And I'm not saying that what they're doing is stronger than 
having a mind of Christ because it definitely isn't. But for people that are uh, not renewing their mind daily, these people are vulnerable to this. And there is warfare, but warfare against the mind, against the soul. And there are certain drugs and poisons that numb you. And and there are medications that numb you. I remember when Ritalin first came out, and um, you know, they recommend my little brother take it, and he was just so zombie like, and a lot of the kids were at school. A lot of parents started taking their children off of that. So it's not like what I'm saying is very far fetched. It's not sci fi at all. And, and and the Lord showed me these things to reveal and share with other people so that we're prepared. Um so that's the reason why everybody at the mall and all the children were very zombie like. Okay. Um Everybody was on some type of medication. I, I remember that also. I don't remember how, but I do remember that. And it's like that now. Big Pharma, they're pushing medications more and more and more. And I believe a lot of these side effects work alongside of the toxins that are in the water, the food, and the air for the people that are living a more organic lifestyle. There are people that are moving underground now. There's this show that comes on called Doomsday Preppers. So, I mean, none of this is far-fetched, but all these medications, everything, it all works together, okay? Um, okay, so with the beans and everything, outside, if you all want to know what outside looked like, it was so scary. You know when it gets really dark right before the storm? That's how outside looked. You couldn't see the sun anymore. There was so much smog. There was so much um, just debris and pollution where the sun no longer really shined through. Everything was dark. Um, there were hardly no trees. If there were a tree um, in the yard, it was dead. Um, and, 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 and throughout the whole time, I had a lot of windows in my house. And I gather from that solar panels, but that does no good when there's no sun shining through. Um, and like I said, there were hardly no trees. So that means there's going to be a lot of carbon dioxide or whatever effects from that. Because trees help us. They, they need, you know, the same way we need oxygen, they need carbon dioxide. I mean, we live alongside each other in the ecosystem, okay? And once something is disturbed, it affects everything else within the ecosystem. Um, so I have a whole lot of windows in my house. It's dark outside, very few trees, very industrial looking. The architecture was futuristic but industrial looking also. Nothing looked expensive anymore. Everything looked run down. Uh, okay. And let's see. Oh, we also had cards. There were these cards and they were on kind of like keychains. I'm looking at the time. I'm at 13 minutes. Okay, let me hurry up. Um, we had cards and they were on keychains and these cards, these keychains were connected to your right hand, to your wrist. Um, at this point, I was at a club. I left the house and I was at what looked like a club or a restaurant or a bar and grill or something like that. I was there. Okay. In order to sit in certain areas, you would have to identify yourself with the cards that were attached to your right hand. If you could imagine getting all your credit cards and all your identifications, driver's license, school identifications, college identifications, all of that on one card connected to your hand. That's what everybody carried around. And in order to sit in a certain area in a restaurant or to um, join a group of people that are already there to be seated, you have to show proof that you were associated with that group of people. Okay, and people were taking these cards and they were swiping them. There were swiping stations. Um, not like what we see today. Kind of like um, the phones where they have these things you connect to your phone and you can swipe credit cards. Okay, well, everyone that worked at the restaurant or whatever it was had one of those. So there were a whole lot of swiping stations and it was just so much card swiping going on. Hardly no interaction, hardly no talking. Everything you needed to do, you just swipe a card to do it. Uh, if you get declined, oh well. Some people got declined. And I don't even know what happened to them when they got declined. I don't even want to get into that. But because um, God didn't lay that on my heart and give me an understanding of it. So I'm not going to get into it. But I do know some people's card did not go through and was unauthorized. They were transferred somewhere else to an unknown place. Okay, people, the way they dress. Um, it, it was really weird. They would dress um, like futuristic shiny clothes, shiny patterns, metallic. 
but it was mixed in with older stuff. Um, almost clothes from the mid 1900s, maybe 1950s, mixed with a futuristic metallic material. That was the wardrobe how people dressed. Um, I went into this shop shopping store, this store to shop, or whatever it was. It was near the restaurant. Um, and that was what was in there, the type of clothes they were selling. Everything sounded robotic. Even simple things we use daily like toilets and kitchen appliances. Everything that I use, everything that everybody around me used sounded robotic. It made the kind of like the Terminator um, show, that sound that it makes. That's how everything sounded, even the little simple stuff. Um, okay, all the kids within this vision were very thin. I didn't see very many obese people, um, especially children. Um, and, and it seems that, and what I gather from that, there were limits of how much food people could have per household. This was all being tracked with these cards that were attached to people's right hand. Um, these cards were touch screen and they were clear and you could, you could see straight through the cards, okay? They were transparent and it looked like they had little chips and little wiring inside the cards. Um, and the best picture I can use to describe that, have you all seen the fake iPhones on YouTube that are transparent? You can see through them, you can see all the inner workings, the chips and everything. Okay, well that's how the cards look. If you haven't seen that video, just type in transparent iPhone and it should come up. Um, okay, so this was um, what people used. There was a limit of food per household. That's why the children were so thin. There were not uh, very many obese people at all. And even at the house I was at, I noticed that there was a very scarce amount of food. Um, holograms replace people working in stores. The store that I was in looking at all the clothes that people were purchasing, well when you get to the counter there's a hologram there that you interact with and swipe your card. And this hologram had as much more personality than the people did. The hologram, I remember the hologram at one point got an attitude with me because I wasn't buying anything. I was just picking it up looking at it. But of course I'm not going to buy anything. First of all, I don't know where I am. Okay, I don't know what year I'm in. So I'm just looking and paying attention to everything going on around me. The hologram gets an attitude with me. Ma'am, are you going to buy something? You know? And I just kind of looked at her and I'm just like, really? Like, what do I say to a hologram? How, how can she hear me anyway to respond? I'm just all confused. But everybody else in the store act like it was normal. They would go up to the hologram and swipe their card at the swiping station wrapped around their wrist and get their clothes or whatever and leave. Um, okay. So, okay. And, that was the, and the last thing was the architecture. All of the architecture was industrial mixed with futuristic two things in intertwined with each other so if, if you could picture uh, there's a movie called what is the name Metropolis from the early 1900s if I'm not mistaken uh, Fritz Springmeier I remember him mentioning some things that came back to me everything just looked like you know workers workers on the ground in this movie if you haven't seen it check out some clips of it on YouTube this is what it reminded me of and there were futuristic buildings, buildings I haven't seen before, Build, buildings much taller than anything I've seen now um, that almost reached the heavens because it was so cloudy so you couldn't see the top of some of these buildings. But there were also other buildings that looked like they were made out of this rubber material. Um, so that was it. But this made me really uncomfortable and a lot of what I've talked about is bad to me. It's bad. Um, you know, children having sex at that early age, those STDs, those blisters, the parasites, the air, you know, everything. And, and we're coming to that. That's a very scary place to be. No one cared. No one had love anymore. And there's a scripture in, in the Bible that talks about in the, in the last days how people's love will grow cold. These people were ice cold. There, there was no compassion. No, nothing. They just went about their business like zombies and robots. And, um, you know, it was scary. So, 
Enjoy your life now while it is the way it is. You will not be like this forever. And try to learn to live off less. Try not to complain about not having it. Be content with what you have. Um, and no matter how less you have, you are very blessed to have what you have. And that's the best advice I could give. But um, yeah, it's not looking good. And I hate to be like a doomsday prophet, but I'm just a messenger, so don't shoot the messenger. All right, well, I have more coming, much more coming. Um, and who knows what I'm going to see tonight. And I will continue to share these things with you as they're shared with me. If you find any information that confirms anything I've said or explained that I saw in this vision, please send it to me and send me the link. Um, and I do appreciate you all. You all are so awesome. You will always find something that's in it to me and it makes what I see makes more make more sense. So I do appreciate you and the work you do. And I appreciate you for listening. Alright. Well, that's it for today. May you be blessed. May the Lord keep you and your family. And continue to pray for those that do not know the truth and are blind.